So hello everyone and welcome to this next lecture in the DC DC converter series and we have been simulating the transformer until now. So in the last video we had successfully simulated the transformer. We had solved some of the instability issues. We do still see some marginal instability but some of that is not really very or rather some of that is very difficult to get rid of. You would need to actually reduce your time step or choose even higher order integration methods but this is good enough for now 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 that we have achieved this we would like to go to the next stage and that next stage is i would like to start simulating high frequency transformers so that we can gradually move on to dc to dc converters which have transformers in them so as always before i start the lecture a bit of a little bit of brief background that if you are interested in these kind of video lectures but you would like something a little more comprehensive I do have full length online courses on the MOOC website Udemy and this is one of the first ones that I created which is simulating power electronic circuits using Python and in this I talk about how to install the software, how to install Python, Python power electronics, a little bit of basic background on electrical engineering and power electronics and finally a case study of simulating a buck converter with closed loop control. And if you are interested more on the signal processing or control side, I have another course which is called Basics of Digital Signal Processing for Power Engineers. And in this, I talk about how you can design filters using Python for power applications. So there is a basic background of signal processing. There is some amount of installation and usage about the different Python packages like NumPy, SciPy and the signal package within SciPy. And finally, there is a case study in which I design a low pass and a notch filter using frequency response characteristics with Python packages. And the last course or the latest course which I created is called Simulation of Magnetics for Power Electronics using Python. And in this, we talk about how you can simulate different magnetic components such as an inductor, coupled inductors, and transformers using Python power electronics. So there is basics of magnetism, basics of theory related to how magnetism is used in electrical machines. And finally, there is a case study of a flyback converter, right? So these are courses which cover this, the contents of these kind of video lectures in much greater detail. The links for these courses are provided in the description of this video. So if you're interested, please do check them out. So coming back to the actual video itself. So this is where we had left off. Now, in the previous lecture, we had decreased the load current to a very small value just to show that even if the load current, that is I2, is negligible and you see it's almost zero, that is because I had increased the load resistance to a very large value, the primary current still draws a current and this current is the magnetizing current, right? Now. Now that we've completed this, let's go back. Let's revert back to our usual load resistance. So I'm going to decrease this to, let's say 10. And let's go back. So let me just give it a quick run just to make sure everything's working. Simulation is running. Always go to the command line. Make sure there is no error and there is none. So we are good to go. So let me plot the winding voltages. And let me plot the transformer currents. And let me go over to this. And the winding voltages look okay as always. Or rather, these are the transformer currents as always low voltage winding that is the secondary winding always has the higher current right so and the ratio is not exactly one is to two and we've already seen that the reason is because there is a magnetizing component rather the magnetizing current drawn is drawn in the primary and that is the reason why the primary current is not exactly half of the secondary current so and these are the winding voltages Okay. 
there appears to be a bug in the file browser. You see some of the PNG files disappeared. The transformer currents also seem okay. Voltages are also okay. We do have a step down transformer. We have a 240 by, one, 240 by 120 volt transformer. So therefore the primary voltage is double the secondary voltage, right? And this is expected. This here is mainly because my primary starts as a cosine. This sudden jump is the reason why there is an initial transient, right? As I said before, to get rid of this transient, there is only real there are two ways. One is to decrease the time step or to choose a higher order integration solver. Okay. So now that we are here, let me stop the simulation and let me do a backup of all my files. Because now that we have a stable simulation, it is usually advisable to backup everything. So I will export all my parameters. and also my control files. And let me go back to the main page. And if you come, you should see the params.csv file and the descriptor.csv file. So now we have taken backup of all our files because we now have a stable, stable simulation. Now, let's move on to the next level. And that is, let us now choose a high frequency input that is in our circuit supposing we replace this source from a 50 hertz source to let's say a 5000 hertz source right because eventually we'll be moving on to DC to DC converter so we can even choose something like 10,000 hertz it's not a problem because typically a converter like a DC to DC converter or a flyback converter would operate at anything between 50 to 100 or 100 kilohertz or sometimes even 200 kilohertz, right? So it is important that we start first with a sinusoid and then move on to the next type which is actually connecting converters and power electronics to our transformer. So let's get started before. So let me go over once again edit circuit parameters, voltage source and here I'm going to change this right so let's change 10,000 Hertz right now again it's important to know that this frequency can be anything that you really want right it could be anything let us leave this as now the peak voltage is 311 later on when we start designing DC DC converters we would change everything right so we would actually get rid of this voltage source and replace it by an edge bridge. But for now, this is good enough. And everything else remains the same. Let's go back. And here, let's view output. What we need to do is check out our code. Now, this is where we had our transformer model. Now, until now, this entire transformer model was for a 50 hertz transformer and as I already said before for a 50 hertz transformer that has a 20 millisecond time period a 1 microsecond integration time step is good enough right and 1 microsecond is also the integration time step of the entire simulation right so it is a sampling time step of this control file as well as the integration time step of the simulation now we have chosen a 10,000 hertz system so let's just quickly go and do that calculation so if i say one divided by ten thousand i now have hundred microseconds as my time period so this new system that i have which is a ten thousand hertz system has a hundred microsecond time period now if you just do the simple calculation you see that before my ratio between the time period and the integration time step was 20,000. That is fairly good because this results in it in an accurate simulation. Now I have this much. So what I would do is I seven divided by if I say if I use 
the same integration time step that is I divide this 100 microseconds by 1 microsecond I get just 100. If I continue with the same 1 microsecond integration time step I will be simulating the circuit at just 100 times faster than actually the system. This will not do. Right? Compare these two here. Here the ratio between the system frequency and the integration time step is 20,000. Here the ratio between the system frequency and the integration time step is just 100. So if I were to maintain something like this, I would need of course to decrease my time step. So let me do that here. If I say i7 and instead I divide it by 10,000, let's say I don't have to go to 20,000, let's say 10,000, I end up with the simulation time step of 10 raised to minus 8. All right? And this is what I would need to do. So first, let me go and just run the simulation because as I said, there's no harm. That's one of the advantages of having a simulation. If it doesn't work, it's unstable. Unlike a circuit which can actually blow up, all right? And I'm not sure how many of you have built circuits, but I have and I've seen them blown up. A simulation, the best part is you can run it without any fear of damage. So let's just run this first. As always, go to the command line, make sure there is no error. So we are simulating a 10,000 Hertz system at one microsecond integration time step and our transformer model is also having a one microsecond sampling time step, right? So let's try to run our voltages, at least plot our voltages. Let me go and check out what is the winding voltage. So this is a winding voltage. So you see, it appears to be working, right? Now, let's plot the currents as well. Okay, currents also seem to be working. Though you see, the result is very different. But anyway, the result could also be different because remember, we have an inductor and we have a higher frequency. So, let me zoom in a little. So let me zoom in between 0.04 and 0 0.05. So 0 0.04, 0 0.05. We might have to zoom in again, but that's okay. Yes, we do need to zoom in again. So let me zoom in between 0 0.044 and 0 0.046. Okay, seems better. So, as you see, it does seem to be working. All right. So you see, it does seem to be working. We do seem to, it does seem to be stable. We have something of at least a sinusoid. Maybe we can even simulate further. Here it, here it seems like it would have been really convenient if we could just zoom and maybe I'll work on that feature sometime. Alright, so it appears like our we do have simulate we do have a proper sinusoid. So for example, the blue line is the primary voltage, the orange line is the secondary voltage, and the primary is primary voltage is double the secondary voltage, which is also what we expect. So let's do the same zoom in for the currents. We might have to zoom in on the Y as well. We can do that. And yes, we do. So we zoom in between, let's say, 0 0.1 and 0 
should be minus 0.1 this should be 0.1 all right so here we see a fairly strange result right this is not at all like what we saw in the previous lecture right or the previous case with a 50 hertz transformer we are seeing the currents actually completely out of phase that is not how it was in the previous case in the previous case the primary current was larger than the secondary current but the secondary current need not be completely out of phase because remember we are plotting the load current and the source current so we have not reversed the directions yet there has been no reversal of direction so you see this is a case of why your integration time step matters even though we have not resulted in instability we have clearly a wrong result right and this is why i wanted to show you what happens if you simulate at an insufficient integration time step and I would suggest that if you want, go ahead and decrease the integration or rather increase the integration's time step even further and you will see at a later point that this simulation becomes unstable because these errors will gradually add up and result in instability. So this, with this, we have laid the foundation for why integration time step is important and we will tackle that in the next lecture. So as always, to make sure these lectures don't get too long, I will stop this lecture now. If you have any doubts about what I did, feel free to post in the comments, send me an email or message me on social media, whichever is your preference. Otherwise, I will see you in the next week where we will change the integrations time step and continue with this series. So thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Goodbye for now.